Hello, I'm Kate, and this is Allison. <laughs> We're here at California Carnivores, and we are going to show you how to make a temperate carnivorous plant bog. So this is a giant bog that we're going to put temperate carnivorous plants in and that means plants that want to live outdoors all year round. These are plants like Saracenia or North American pitcher plants, Venus flytraps, temperate sundews like the threadleaf sundews, and even some of the temperate pinguicula. So these are full sun plants. They want to go in a place where they're going to get as much daylight as possible. So keep that in mind when you're building one of these big bogs that you want it to do well. It's kind of hard to move around because it's so big. So pick a place that's super sunny. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have access to water that is either distilled or rainwater or reverse osmosis water. So we're going to show you how to put together this awesome bog. And we're gonna be putting plants like these beautiful American pitcher plants, which are just coming out of dormancy. They have beautiful flowers and their pitchers are just starting to come up. And so we're gonna start with this super cool bog container. Um, you can get these at you know your local hardware store. I got mine at Costco and it doesn't drain and it's just some type of plastic. So you could have any sort of non-draining container. Um, try to stay away from unglazed ceramics just because the minerals and the clay will eventually leach in your plants. And we don't like that for carnivorous plants. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna layer up some um, kind of like this rocky pumice on the bottom. And you know, when you fill up a bog like this that doesn't drain, it's kind of hard to water. So we're gonna show you a little tip for how to make this easier to get water into this giant thing without just deluging the top of your um, peat and perlite mix. So I'm gonna start, I got, um, this is just regular pumice here. You can use like little tiny river rock type of thing. Dump some in. Okay. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know, two inches. Doesn't matter. Two or three inches. Not specific. And then as I layer up the peat and perlite mixture, I'm gonna make a little channel of bigger, chunkier rock that we're gonna use as like a water channel. So we'll be able to water um, our little river rock channel and get water down into the bottom of this thing. It just makes watering a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> What's the best method? Okay. So here, you, you put rocks in the thing. This is just a mixture of river rock. It doesn't have to be anything specific. This is like a horticultural river rock so if you're worried about where it came from give it a little rinse before you start using it in your bog and we just have this plastic cup here we cut the bottom out of it we're just it, we're just improvising here and that way when we put in so now we're gonna start putting in this is peat moss and a quarter perlite about more or less All nice and mixed up. <laughs> We're probably gonna need more mixture. Okay. So go ahead, Allison, pull it up. Pull this out. Beautiful. Nice. Okay, go ahead. Do another one. So one thing to be very sure of is that when you get your peat moss and your perlite from wherever, Home Depot or your, your local nursery preferably, make sure that it has no added fertilizers. Okay, that is key. And you can See our website, we talk about uh, mixes for carnivorous plant bogs and 
So this is just regular old peat moss with a little bit of perlite added to it. That feels perfect. <laughs> so you can see how heavy this gets. So, I mean, we're doing it here on this table and it's gonna take a couple really strong people to move this. So if you can, build it in place and you don't even have to worry about that. Perfect. Lovely. Lovely. So now every time we water a bog, we're just gonna stick the little nozzle of our watering can right here and we're gonna be able to get so much more water into this thing than we would if we were just trying to like pour it over the top. Okay. Now, all right. okay, so now Allison has all these gorgeous, giant Saracenia she's gonna put in here. Um, we're eventually gonna cut off the flowers because stresses the plant out. I mean, transplanting a plant like this is very stressful and it doesn't need to be putting energy into the flowers while it's going through this um, transition. So we'll cut them off, put them in a vase, make yourself a nice bouquet. Mm -hmm. And all right, to get these in here, literally, um, I would just, I would just dig a hole. See how long these roots are? I mean, they're not always that long, but get, get them in so that you have at least you have the roots like at least this deep and then we're going to plant this so that this is the rhizome here and we're going to get the soil level just above that rhizome so just do the best you can go ahead yeah dig a yeah you're gonna need a bigger hole than that these do have nice big roots yeah all right go ahead and then just tuck them in as gently as you can but also you have to kind of yeah you can be firm with these plants. They're ridiculously tough. They're super hardy. We don't have to be super gentle. And you know, most plants like it. Um, they want to be tucked into their mix um, pretty firmly because you really want a lot of contact with the roots and this dirt because that's how they get their water is like they have contact with the soil and through that wet soil is how they draw out the moisture. So really push it in there, yeah. And then of course we're gonna do a little top watering on this. We'll gotta help settle them down too. It does settle it. There you go. Perfect. It was a little okay. wonky. <laughs> okay. So then this one. How do you make um, like figure out where you put them in a bog this big? So um, with plants this size, uh, you just want to spread them out evenly. You can also take a look at where the rhizome is growing. So if you look at the edges here, so I have a big rhizome here and there's the growing tip. That's where all the new growth is. So in general, the growth of this plant is gonna be this way. So what you just want to avoid is taking that growing tip and like putting it right towards the edge of the pot. So I wanna think more about, you know, where do I want this thing to grow? So growing um, just, you know, you want to give it some room. Go ahead. Nice. Let's get you in here. All tucked in. Yeah. It's hard Push when you're them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick complaint. Yeah. Want <laughs> <Not> a stool? <laughs> Is that enough, do you think? And is enough of the rhizome? Yeah, yeah get, you might want to get, this guy's kind of weird because he's a little taller than the other mm -hmm. ones, but you can always just kind of maneuver him around. Gotcha. And we can always um, add a little bit more dirt on the top here. Okay, which, and it will settle once we top water. Yes, it. no matter what you do, no matter how hard you pack this in, it's going to settle somewhat. Mine settled a couple inches over a year, so. Okay. All right, do more. I think that was the hardest thing for me to get used to at first when I started doing this was I was very timid with yes, really packing yes, them in yes. and they really do they can take a bit I think that's the hardest thing for people they're so afraid to um, kill these plants by handling them too roughly but as you can see I mean these are like really thick rhizomes their roots are nice and thick and you know they 
they can handle a lot. Yeah. So don't worry about being too gentle on your plants. Um, it's actually it's actually better um, to be firmer because mm -hmm. you want that contact. With the you want that contact. orient this one because the roots are going down so he wants to be like this right yeah. here or would you do it um i would generally point the the growing points um in that Inward. way especially right here because it's it doesn't have very far to go gotcha it's just gonna go right into those rocks that's not where they want to go i know sometimes you don't have a choice <laughs> and that's okay it'll do what it does yeah Nice. So, um, I'm gonna go get a watering can and we'll just water, we'll top water it so we get all of these guys um, just really settled in, we, you know, get all the roots with um, lots of dirt and water around them and then cut off the uh, flowers. So here, take that okay. and go ahead and take the flowers off. I'm gonna go get us a water can. I do love these. Nice, nice. Beautiful. Yes, look at that. So gorgeous. I'm so happy. Yeah, and you know, any pictures that break, you can cut them off too. And if you want to completely avoid breaking stuff, then just do it early in the year while they're still dormant and they don't have their new growth up. But generally speaking, you know, just do it. <laughs> you know, if it's like you don't want to wait a whole nother year to, to do it. So cut that guy off. Okay. Uh, yeah. Get this. I mean, they'll, they'll figure it out. They'll grow new stuff and it'll be all perfect. And then uh, make sure when you're watering this, you're using uh, rainwater or reverse osmosis water or distilled water. You don't want to be starting out with a, um, like a bog this size with like super minerally water. So I'm just going to water these guys in really good i really want the dirt to settle in around all of their roots but now i can oops <laughs> water is just gonna flow down here really easily and look i'm highly even disturbing the surface of the soil Okay, so one more important thing, uh, since this is a non-draining bog, in the winters especially, when it rains a lot, this whole thing is gonna fill up. And what you don't want is your precious little plants to be like sitting underwater can cause rot. So one thing we do is we just solve that by drilling a little hole and put a couple of them around the bogs. And I do this, um, you know, about an inch or two below the soil level. And that way, when this thing fills up, It'll actually just drain a little bit and these guys won't be sitting underwater. Okay, so now we got all these big things in here and we got it nicely watered. If you want, you can add all sorts of smaller temperate plants like Venus fly traps or any of the temperate sundews or the temperate pinguicula, like pinguicula primuliflora. Um, any little thing you want and it's not gonna get ruined when you water this whole thing and you're digging around for these big plants. So this would be a great time to just add, you know, your, your little special things. Mm. This is our beautiful Saracenia bog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let us know and I hope you guys try it out. Peter, come check it out. We're telling people how to make a bog. Look at this gorgeous bog. That is beautiful. Did I'm you so Did you see the crazy roots on her plants too? Jeez. Whoa. Look at that. Oh my god. That's going to be a beautiful bog. I know. Are those bog only one variety? No, I have lots of, uh, there's a lot of flava in here, but then I also have some specials. I have uh, Hurricane Creek and Adrian Slack. And oh, beautiful. Royal Ruby. How are you going to lift this thing? <laughs> well, that's, we need your help. <laughs> we know you just detailed your car, but can we use your car? I'm going to take a nap. <laughs>